Good Benders, the channel grew a lot lately. A lot of people joined the movement. You watching this right now, maybe you discovered my channel recently, but I've actually been doing YouTube for close to three years now. In the shadows, outside of people's eyes, plotting my master plan. Oh, just kidding. Or am I? It's just interesting that all the growth of the channel came within this past month. A lot of people have been asking me questions about my story, how I came to New York, uh, advice for up and coming programmers. So I'll be answering all of this in this video. Let's get into it. First question from Gigi, what's your IP address? <laughs> all right, next, what sort of an engineer are you? I'm a senior growth engineer, which is basically the same as a full stack software developer, but I focus more on growth features. So features that help the business grow, acquire more users, and put simply generate more cash for the company. Do you use ChatGPT to do your coding? Well, I've started a lot lately actually, but I use it mostly for simple things like write a unit test or write a small function. Impressive tool. I think it's definitely the future and something to use and something that will just keep getting better and better. One thing that I can recommend also to use is GitHub Copilot, which is kind of like ChatGPT, but it's integrated inside of your code editor. And that's a massive booster also for productivity. I received around 10 different questions about where I'm from. I'm from a region of the world you have probably never heard about. It's called Ingushetia. It's in the mountainous region of the Caucasus. Are you Muslim? Yes, brother. Alhamdulillah. What's the first programming language I started to learn? It was actually Java. My first year in college, there was a class to learn Java. Uh, it was one semester, so around five months of learning. And I honestly hated it. Uh, it was a good, it's not one of the languages that I like. But the first language that I actually started learning by myself and I really enjoyed was JavaScript. That's the one I usually recommend to people as a first language to learn. What time do you leave your house to go to work and how many hours do you work? So I leave my place at around 8.10 in the morning, 8.20 sometimes. I arrive at work at 9 a.m. I work until around 6 p.m., 6.30, get back home around 7 p.m. So it's eight hours of work and then one hour break for lunchtime. Okay, so one question that I received a lot is my story of how I came to New York, how I came to the U.S., which visa did I get? I actually came as a student, that was like five to six years ago, so I had an F1 visa, that's the student visa. I did a master's degree at UCLA. Once I graduated from there, I got an OPT, that's a work permit that is given to people who study in the US. Usually it's one year, but if you study in STEM fields, so science, technology, math, and programming is one of them, then you get uh, a two-year extension. So you have a total of three years that you can work on OPT. I did that, I worked three years at the company. Then I switched jobs and I got sponsored by my company for an H-1B. H-1B, that's a work visa. I moved from LA to New York, and that's basically how I got here. Do you program in JavaScript or React? react all the way do you have a car no i don't have a car because public transportation in new york is actually better than owning a car pretty efficient for me from uh, my apartment to my work office is like 30 to 40 minutes door to door what do you use to plan your days a normal notepad or day planner so i actually use a paper notebook that i have i have my own structure of how i plan my days basically every day has time blocks and every time block has some specific tasks that i need to do so that's it. How much did your computer set up at home cost? So from memory, it was like $800 for the standing desk, uh, $400 for the chair, $150 for each of the monitors. I have two of them. And then I have like random things like some lights and I have a whiteboard. So total would be around $1,500. But I plan to do a full video uh, on my desk setup. So I'll show everything in details there. Next question I've received is kind of long, but it's around the lines of how would I learn to code if I would have to start over right now in the era of AI? What I would do is kind of similar to what you already know, probably is I would start with learning full stack web development, uh, JavaScript, and then frameworks or libraries like React. So that's still there. But then what I would focus more on is learning systems and architectures and APIs, things like learning how to interact with APIs like GPT-3, for example, or GPT-4, learn how to use those AIs, use those cool technologies available to build a lot more powerful projects to start work on things that are a lot more impressive than what you'd be able to do before. And I think that's the way to go, honestly. Like the way to go is not to be afraid of those AIs and be like, oh, like everything I'm learning is gonna get deprecated and just cry about it. Like that's not the way. When the revolution happens, there are winners and there are losers. You wanna be among the winners. And the winners are those who capitalize very quickly on those new technologies. So what I would recommend you is just learn all those new AIs that come out, learn the APIs, learn how to interact with them, how to build custom things. Basically, that's what I would do. But I think I'll make an entire dedicated video on this topic because it's pretty wide and there are some nuances that are important to know. So stay tuned for that. Do you plan on releasing your young Codebender program soon? 
Great question. And this fits nicely into the announcement that I want to make. I'm starting a Discord server for our Codebender Nation. It's a place where you guys can interact, ask questions, share projects, resources, and I'll be in there too. Link the link in the description to join it. Down the line, I want to release a Codebender JavaScript cohort course where I teach you guys how to build a real project from scratch. And it's something that by the end of it, you'll be able to show to your friends, you'll be able to showcase in the resume, you'll be able to hopefully get interviews from it, get a job. It's really very practical skills on how to use code to build very cool and exciting projects. And even it's skills that you could potentially use to build your own business. It will be a paid program. I'm going to select a few people and we're going to go through this cohort all together. I'm going to invest my time to help you guys. I haven't really seen other courses that do that. So I'm very excited about this. The only issue is time. I don't have enough time right now to finish this course. I'm involved in too many different projects. But once those are sorted out and that should happen pretty soon, I'll be able to focus on this one. In the meantime, though, while you're waiting for it, if you're looking for motivation on learning to code, you can check out this video where I show you my entire story from writing my first line of code to where I'm at today.